I'm here at Terminal 4 in JFK Airport, where protesters first gathered when the ban was enforced. As of this weekend, the ban is still suspended, and things have gone back to normal at the airport. A federal judge in Seattle issued a nationwide block on Friday, restraining President Trump's executive week-old order that banned the entry of people from seven Muslim-majority countries. President Donald Trump is now complying with the federal judge's order, reversing the ban. The Stony Brook community united immediately after the ban to show solidarity on campus. The judge's order to lift the travel ban allows anyone with a valid visa to enter the country by Customs and Border Protection. Our decision, effective immediately, effective now, puts a halt to President Trump's unconstitutional and unlawful executive order. A 90-day suspension was imposed last week on travelers from Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen as a way to protect Americans from terrorist attacks. Head of the graduate student organization and a PhD student at Stony Brook, Vahida Rasecki, was detained for almost 24 hours at John F. Kennedy Airport on January 28th after arriving from Iran. With the help of lawyers and the linguistics department, Rasecki was able to return back to Stony Brook. I haven't slept for more than 48 hours. I'm just so tired. Last weekend, massive crowds gathered outside of JFK Airport to speak out against the immigration ban. Stony Brook University advised students from the affected countries to avoid traveling outside of the U.S. last week. I think they did pretty good, you know. They, uh, they sent a confirmation emails to 80 students who came from seven countries, which including me. And uh, I'm very proud to be in here, yeah. Legal experts from the New York law firm Barst spoke to the campus community regarding concerns about the executive order. On Wednesday, the campus held a march of about 400 people for unity during the day and a solidarity rally in the evening. In New York alone, our 114,000 international students contribute more than $3.9 billion and create nearly 47,000 jobs in this state. These students and scientists are critical to the innovative society we need in the 21st century, we discourage and exclude them at our peril. The College Democrats organized the march that echoed on campus. We thought that it was like a really important um, thing that we needed to do to show solidarity on our campus. Well, the energy was incredible. Um, being in the crowd, I love the activism part of it. I love pumping up the crowd. And because it was such a good cause, we were happy with um, the huge turnout that we had. And everyone had so much enthusiasm and was really ready to uh, proclaim on this campus that we are about love and unity and acceptance. Although the ban has been lifted, the university's mission to protect its students and community is a top priority. For Stony Brook News, I'm Jacob Lukowitz.